I like to think I have pretty decent instincts now when it comes to knowing who has bad intentions, but I wasn't always cautious and observant as I am now. When I was in high school, I always felt so ugly. I had low self-esteem and anxiety, which was really more of a problem rather than my looks. So if any one of the opposite sex gave me even a little attention, I would start to like them. I was pretty innocent, despite how desperate I was, having only kissed one boy. So when I was 17 and a college guy put some interest into me, I immediately clung to him. I was on this app before Tinder, and I met this guy who lived 7 hours from my home city. His name was Brandon and he was gorgeous. Blonde hair, muscular, blue eyes. He played soccer for his university and was 19 years old. Honestly, he wasn't my usual type. I really like guys with darker hair and eyes. I still do. But he was really handsome and really kind. He would shower me with compliments and talk to me all the time. I lived alone, long story, in an apartment with just my cats. So when I would get lonely or scared, he would always comfort me. A month into talking, he started to ask for pictures. Not ones of my face, but obviously nudes or bra pictures. Now, this was nearly six years ago, and I didn't have a good concept of stranger danger on the internet. I mean, smartphones had only really been out for two or three years at this point, at least in my school and with my age group. 17-year-old me, who was insecure, wanted to make him happy because I couldn't believe I got in a guy like him. I was ready to do anything he asked. I never sent naked pictures. I was too insecure for that, but I would send him pictures of me in a bra. He would shower me with compliments saying how sexy and beautiful I was, and I fell for every word. With time, I started to get upset though. I wanted to see him. I would always send him when he asked, but he would never send me any. He would show me pictures of him with his shirt off, but the pictures were always bad quality. When I started to get persistent, he promised he would start calling me. For some reason, that appeased me, and we talked many times a week. After a couple months, he got increasingly more sexual with me, telling me what he wanted to do with me and how badly he wanted me. This made me kind of nervous since I had only kissed a boy, but it also made me a little excited. It felt good to be wanted by someone, and I had really grown to like him. This was all during the first semester of my senior year in high school, and I was about to turn 18 the next semester in late January. As it got to Christmas time, he started talking about coming to my city to see me for my birthday. This had me really excited, since I really wanted to see him in person so badly. We had first talked about me going to him, something he had insisted on, but I chickened out and said I couldn't drive alone. It was an excuse. I really didn't want to go to an older guy's house and stay with him alone. My house just felt more comfortable and safe. We planned on the weekend after my birthday, and everything seemed fine. But then, one day in my choir class, my best friend, an exchange student from Germany, was talking with me about him. I was telling her about him, and she got very unsettled. Have you seen him on video? I told her no, and she gave me a skeptical look. Something doesn't feel right. There's no way that he is real. Not that you couldn't date someone like him, but he's too perfect. She was very direct and blunt with me, something my other friends weren't, so I took her words deeply, and I'm so thankful I did. I immediately asked him for a picture of his face. He made up some excuse about how he couldn't take a picture right then, so I persisted, asking him every day. Finally, my instincts were kicking in, and I was getting scared. I told him I wanted him to video call me. He said no. I fought with him for hours on it one night, telling him if he tells me the truth, I won't get mad. He refused. I searched for his name that he gave me in Facebook, determined to find out on my own if he wasn't going to give in. Nothing came up on him. I texted him, telling him I couldn't find him on Facebook, and he gave in, giving me a completely different name than he told me. That's me. I remember just feeling cold as I read that. I looked up the account, and everything he told me was a lie. His name, his face, his age. He was 25, not 19. I was terrified. 
I thought I had been talking to someone that was just two years older, which is legal in my state, but he was eight years older. I immediately stopped texting him. That's when he started getting obsessive. He would text me a dozen times a day, call me over and over again. He would beg me to answer him, to give him a chance. Then he started threatening me to answer. He told me that he saved all my pictures and told me that he would send it to all my friends and family on Facebook, show everyone me in a bra and show our text messages talking about what he would do to me sexually if we met. Looking back, all of this was more damaging to him than me, but I was young and stupid and afraid. I hated my body so much and I was terrified of people seeing it. So I started talking to him again, more reserved and cautious this time. The days inched closer to my birthday and the weekend that we had planned. Our messages had become bland and short since I was trying to make him lose interest in me, but he never gave up. If I took too long to message him, then he would threaten me again. My birthday fell on a Monday of this year, and he sent me all kinds of messages. I don't even remember what I did that birthday. I didn't have many friends, and I never liked to celebrate, so it was probably something small. When Friday hit, I got a text from him that morning saying that he was driving to my city and he would pick me up from school. I was terrified. I lost a lot of my friends the semester before. Long story. So they obviously had no clue of my situation. Out of desperation, I went to one of my guy friends, who I hadn't talked to in a couple of months, and spilled everything to him. He was a longtime friend, so he was sympathetic and promised to follow me home that day. I went straight to my car, ignoring the massive amounts of text saying, Where are you? I'm here. My friend drove behind me all the way to my apartment, which he had no clue where I was living and stayed with me as I cried for a while. I turned my phone off and my friend left later that night. Brandon had no clue where I lived, but I was still paranoid. What if somehow he found me? Only three people knew where I lived, four now with my guy friend and he didn't come in contact with any of them. When I finally turned my phone on again, he was threatening me. I was exhausted and fed up. I started spam texting him, yelling and venting. I told him how stressed he made me and how what he was doing was wrong. I told him to send the pictures and I didn't care anymore. Then I started attacking his character, telling him that no one can love him if he hides who he is and threatens people and treats people like shit when they catch him in a lie. Thankfully for me, he had enough care for me to take my words to heart. He apologized and told me he deleted all the pictures. He swore to leave me alone as long as we still talked to each other once in a while, as friends. I agreed, even though I knew I was lying. I talked to him for a month, short responses, till he finally gave up. Even now at 22, I still see his name appear sometimes. I blocked his number and deleted him on everything, but his name still shows up on my Instagram or Snapchat when he's trying to re-add me. He's the reason I don't give my name or pictures out. He isn't the first stalker I experienced. The first one was in 6th grade, but that story's for another time. First off, this story happened almost 10 years ago. I'll jump right into it because it's long. I got home from work one day and logged into Facebook to find a message from someone I didn't know. It was too long ago to remember verbatim what was said, but it was along the lines of, hey, I know you have no idea who I am, but I've been trying to decide what to do for a few days now and figured I had to let you know what's been going on. Someone has been catfishing me using your identity for the last two years and I just found out about it last week. The sender of the email was clearly shaken up and understandably was experiencing a mix of emotions. According to her, she had met this imposter online a little over two years prior to her writing this and that they had been engaged in a pretty intimate, long distance relationship for a majority of the time. The imposter created a Facebook and over time reposted almost all of my photos with their own captions to them including the good amount of the art that I've drawn that they took credit for too. They created fake profiles of a good amount of my close family and friends 
so they could comment on the photos of themselves to make the profile seem more legit. The funniest part to me is that although most things in my real life seem to be mirrored in this fake profile, I, a straight male, was instead portrayed as a trans. I think the main reason for that was that the sender of the email and the imposter would actually speak on the phone and the imposter turned out to be female in the end and therefore needed a reason to justify her more feminine sounding voice. Anyway, the sender of the email was justifiably both angry and creeped out and wanted to find the catfish. She started asking me a lot of questions about my life, but phrasing them like, is your sister's name? And did you go to this high school? Some of these were clearly information that someone could get from a quick browse on my profile. But then she asked, is your best friend? Which struck me as odd since despite this person actually being my closest friend, who I spend most of my time with, we barely have any Facebook photos together, and most of them are from a long time ago. Then she asked, were you adopted? And are your half siblings named? And we sealed the deal for me, cause I knew for a fact that I never posted anything about being adopted online. The sender of the email already had an idea that this person had known me in real life, but this confirmed it for me. The sender of the email had contacted me shortly after confronting the imposter for the first time. I guess after two years, they finally became suspicious of the fact that the imposter wouldn't show their face. I have no idea how it took so long for them to figure out they were being played, but I'm glad they finally decided to give the ultimatum of show your face or I'm cutting you off. I'm pretty sure this is the point where the imposter admitted to being a catfish and that she'd been using the identity of someone she had a crush on in high school before hanging up. I was given the URL so I could go through the profile myself, which was still up for a few days after, before it all got removed. It was definitely really bizarre. The imposter had posted more than I ever had on Facebook, and generally seemed like they lived a pretty involved double life online as me. Almost everyone I posted photos with on my real profile would then have their own fake profiles created that had enough content to be generally convincing so they could be tagged in and would validate these new photos. Some of these profiles seemed to have gone on and made their own real friends as well, and I wondered if any of those were used to facilitate even more online dating deception. Either way, the amount of time this person had taken fabricating their alter egos online presence was pretty shocking. The whole time I'd been crawling down his Facebook rabbit hole, the sender of the email was looking through my real profile. After a while, she sent me a message saying, Did you take these photographs? And showed me what I remembered as a black and white photos of a barn or something. I hadn't. Which was weird since everything else on the fake profile originated with me. And she noticed the discrepancy. We both tried to reverse image searching with no luck. Then, either through a stroke of genius or somewhat suspiciously, I couldn't tell. She thought to flip the fake number Imposter had written into her Facebook profile around in reverse and a Google search came with a headline that belonged to the home address of a girl that I had gone to school with. Real me was Facebook friends with the Imposter's real profile. So we both went snooping around and found the photo she had claimed I'd taken, which pretty much confirmed to me that this was the Imposter. I'm pretty sure there was more indicators to the sender as well. But I can't remember. I thought about messaging her for a while, but decided that probably wouldn't lead to anything good. At this time, my thoughts were definitely, let's not meet. I talked a few more times with the sender, just to try to decompress a bit, but honestly, just wanted to distance myself from the situation, and also had my suspicions of the sender as well. I figured maybe it was the imposter's last ditch effort to try to talk to me. Although, when it was all over, the sender seemed eager to leave this all behind as well, so probably not. Either way, it was a really strange experience. I felt mostly freaked out and violated, but I guess a small part of me was flattered by it. I had a lot of mixed emotions. But the weirdest part to me is, I'm a really approachable person, and would have definitely been willing to talk and probably be friends if the person approached me instead. Although... I'm still not sure if this was out of an obsession for me, or if this person felt like I was just suitable image to base their fabrication persona off of. I remember talking to her probably twice throughout high school, 
and really didn't have a good idea who she was other than a quiet hipster girl.